Let's see. Can you help me with that? Not like it. There's a video open there. Open and go. Oh, oh there is video. video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know how loud it is. Hello, I'm Patrick Malvin. Quinn is here right now. <laughs> what we did was we made an automated croquet scorekeeping system. These are croquet balls. Let's see. All right, and so the purpose of this project was to keep score of who had the last wicket, which seems like not an issue. We didn't solve any real problems in the world. We just were having a fun time. Um, over the pandemic, I started playing croquet a lot with some of my retired friends up in Lincoln, Vermont, and they got way into it. Which was, <laughs> it was great. It kind of kept everybody sane, myself included, playing at all times of the year. But when the senior project came around, I was like, okay, we need to do something interesting. And um, I was like, well, I've been playing a lot of croquet. Maybe I'll see if I can work that in. And so that's what happened. Uh, it's specific to golf croquet, not garden croquet. Garden croquet is the one that has nine wickets and you go through and you put your foot on the ball and you hit it, do that. Golf croquet is different. It's, well, actually I'll show in just a minute what it is. Um, wickets are called hoops, not wickets, but I'm gonna call them both. If any of my croquet friends are logged into the Zoom, they'll probably cringe every time I say hoops. But that's all right. They need to go through in a particular order there's six hoops. Uh, you play till seven points. You play in a team of two, but if it's just two people, then one person will play two colored balls. And it's red, or it, it goes in particular order, um, blue, red, black, yellow. And so blue and black are team, red and yellow are team. So it's alternating who goes where. This is the direction you play. You start over in the I guess that's the southeast corner, we'll call it. Yeah, southeast. And you come across, you go up and around the outside through, and then you reverse direction. And the reversing direction is interesting related to the project. It's sort of a, a thing that is available to be done, but it didn't actually implement it in this just because it's more of a proof of concept. But then you come back through and you go in reverse. And since you play till seven, if first team scores all seven wickets, then after this one, you're done. But you won't go past 13. And so these are sort of tournament grade wickets. These are made out of metal and they're really fancy and terribly expensive, um, but they're also boring. <clears throat> so these are the wickets that we have. We have four of them. They're new and exciting and they have lasers. So we like that. All right, and so this is the hardware on the wickets. I guess I'll show you here, since I have it in person. Down here, this is the brake beam sensors. There's two lasers on either side. Well, there's one laser and one light dependent resistor that sort of receives the light and has a resistance. This circuitry here, deals with that essentially makes it a comparator which sends a digital signal to the particle photon, which is this big guy here. And it's running in its offline mode for, we could have done an Arduino when we were going to, but the photon fits much better on top of the wicket. So that was good. Everything else is pretty much the same. The cost was the same. The functionality is equal. I like the photon better. And this here, this is the Pixie 2 camera. Actually, I think I talked about that in a minute. We're using Bluetooth to communicate from each wicket to this computer here. And this has some lab blue code on it, which I'll get to in a minute. So yeah, the photon. 
chose the photon because it's little and it did everything that we wanted it to do. Um, typically, it works in an online mode where it connects to the cloud and you can do all sorts of Internet of Things things on it. And it'll send push notifications to your phone if you want to. If your plant ran out of water, it could tell you uh, while you were at work. But for this specific application, we were using it in an offline mode because the always trying to connect to the cloud slowed it down. And it also was not needed at all and kind of problematic because we wanted to be able to play it out in the field where there is no Internet of Things to worry about. So this is a completely isolated system, which is nice. The Pixie 2 camera, this thing is super cool and way more than we need. Mm -hmm. And it actually turned to be a little bit problematic because it would return so much information about what it saw. <laughs> and all we wanted it to do was to return one color when the laser brake beam was broken. And so it took a while to figure out how to sort of dumb this thing down to a point where it would only send what we wanted, not everything. It'll pick up seven different hues of color and a hundred of them. So <laughs> if there's a hundred different balls of seven different colors, it will send all that data back to whatever it's sending data to. But yeah, since we only wanted one color, one ball, it was quite a bit too much. Uh, but it does, it also sends the coordinates of where the object is sort of in its field of view, which is useful because it would allow us to say, okay, it needs to be right here to there. Okay, wait, the best part. Thanks, my hand is a red ball. It's been doing that the whole time. So I tried to keep my hand out of there and I go touching the laser. Um, so, anyways, about the lasers, the way they work is uh, a laser is shooting directly across into a light dependent resistor. And it's set up with a voltage divider comparator circuit. And so when it crosses the threshold, the comparator sends it up to a digital in, essentially. And it's active high going into one of those pins over there. And it's... All right, well, I guess I'll talk about this. So directionality. The reason there's two on there instead of just one saying, oh, you went through the wicket, is to set a flag saying you broke this laser first, broke this laser second. And then that will tell you which direction the ball was going through the hoop. And since Golf Croquet cares about that, it could be an interesting thing to have. It's not actually in play on here. I, we have all the code to do it and everything is set up to deal with it, but I was getting unreliable readings where sometimes it would only send one. Um, and I figured for the sake of the presentation, it'd be better to have something that clapped than, <laughs> than didn't do anything at all when the ball went through. So, um, let's see. This is the software on the Photon, but I think I actually have, yeah, because we all have looking at code. Steve, I think you might actually look at code sometimes. <laughs> Micro 2 teacher friend. Um, so this, we have the photon in manual mode, means it's not connecting to the cloud. Uh, disconnected, not using Wi-Fi, because it'll also use Wi-Fi, which is another cool thing about it that makes it a little better than you already know. Enough. This is all the serial stuff, serial ones, to get us working out of RX, TX pins uh, to send to the Bluetooth, which sends to that. Oh, actually, and this is all that's happening in the loop is there's a color function that is only searching for the color that is being returned by the Pixie 2. And that's handy because there's not a lot going on in that loop. And then the interrupt service routine when the laser is broken, and you can see I call it ISR North because there's also an ISR South because there's, there's a lot of flag setting and things like that. Uh, but what happens is when this is triggered, the ball color is set to either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Well, so when it's triggered, it won't be set to 0. That's what it is. 1, 2, 3, or 4 for the four different color balls. Um, and then it just prints out via serial connection Bluetooth a color. And the other version of code says color, comma, direction. Um, 
And in that version of the code, it was doing a lot of computation as to what went first, and there was timestamps involved, and it was it was a lot of stuff that was complicating things. It did work, but just not as reliable as we wanted it to work for today. Whatever happened, we want to be sure not to miss it. Um, and then lab view. This was the other, this is the part of code or the part of uh, the computer part. And lab view, I would guess most of you are somewhat familiar with. It's a, a graphical, graphical um, programming, which is very cool. So this is an example of the other blue common part. This is the front panel up on here it is and this here connect it tells you which bluetooth uh, module is looking for coming into the comp port on the computer and so you set these here 26 27 28 or what that computer is actually using for the three wickets the other two are over there uh, and then you have to activate each hoop if you don't activate the hoop it'll still collect information and then when you do activate it halfway through everything will come through at the same time so it's Best to do it beforehand. Uh, these are the scores for each team. And this blank space right here is where a, a uh, LabVIEW LED will illuminate the color of the ball that went through the wicket and be there for three seconds and then will disappear, which was uh, something that I wanted it to do, but then had to tap some friends in for help to make that actually happen. So, Let's see, this, I have the other two behind. So this is a sub PI, which comes next, I believe. This over here is the scorekeeping that is also a sub PI, which I'll also show you in a second. This here is the part that makes the light light up and then come off using property nodes, visible, true. And this is where you set the color. This here is interesting because this is what plays the applause sound when it goes through. Which is very exciting in the last minute edition, but it was by far the highlight of the coding achievement. Mm -hmm. um, it's in this, this thing's called a flat structure, and those execute sequentially. And that is handy so that this weight here doesn't confuse everything in the entire program and sort of allows it to be slightly independent. And this would be for one wicket. So in the overall code, there is three of these exact segments below. The global variables are the same. They're global. This is the visa. This is what the, the Bluetooth is talking to. So you set the COM port here, send in your errors. If there is a byte at the port, it will read it, um, and then it turns that into a string, which it outputs on the other side. This here is part of the direction um, capabilities of the project, where it uses a comma, and it will separate the string based on comma, and then puts it into an array and you can access either one. This is the case structure that keeps track of the score. So these are variables, global variables. And so when one of these is, when a blue ball goes through the wicket, this here says blue. And you're in this case, because this is controlling the case structure. Red and yellow, nothing happens. It just sends the previous score straight through. The blue score, however, gets incremented by one, and then that new value gets sent out the other side. On that side over there, it's just um, what color ball went through and it will illuminate where it sends the message to light up that color ball. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is the, the special special thanks slide. Thanks to, to you, Professor Marcel and Ralph, wherever he is, couldn't make it today. Um, and then, so the lab view help came from some of my work friends, Rich Barrow, Linda Mayer, and Russell Lava. And, the wickets were made by Quinn's dad. Quinn is partner. He's not here. He'll probably show up as soon as we're done. Uh, and then the last slide here is them actually being used out in the wild by a friend. This is one of my friends, Michael, who 
was, was a great croquet player. And uh, they all had quite a good laugh at this because they're like, we didn't think we were actually going to do it. It's like, well, you know, had to had to happen. Let me see this is a video here. Let's see if it's going to be incredibly loud. So there it is. Glorious satisfaction that comes from being applauded up. <laughs> it was going to be set up so one color you would set it. So there's just sort of one person by the focus. And then the blue team will get the more robust performance. <laughs> Um, and another thing that I should probably talk about is that we did custom design a circuit board that may look like a little bit of a rat's nest, but we should have seen it before. And the, so the circuit board essentially pre routes everything so you can just drop it into a, a header and it makes it much more repeatable. And so today, when I got here, it wasn't like, oh, it's not working. I wonder what it could be. Everything just worked in a much more reliable fashion, which is what we were going for. And as far as how much money we spent, we were still way under budget. Since there was two of us, we had a double budget. So we went a little more wild. The Pixie Cam was the most expensive part. Those are 60 something bucks a piece. But I mean, for what they can do, it seems worth it. It has its own little microprocessor on it and huge libraries on the internet of how to, how to use it and what to do with it. But that's about it. Does anyone have any questions? Do you, do you order the print circuit boards online? I ordered those through Express PCB, and we got five of them, and it took four days to get here, which I was really impressed with. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I guess those were actually an, an expensive component, too. They were probably 40 bucks a piece or something. They were like that. Yeah. So, so when Eric was saying, yeah, saying how I, long did it take? I was like, oh, you could do it on yeah, Friday. Yeah, it was going to take months to get it. To get <laughs> yeah. It. So that's why I didn't even yeah. I was going to ask what you used till they board out with. Express PCB. That's, mm -hmm. That was the one. All right. Any, any other questions? Anybody have a digital lamp? Oh. So is this golf croquet a big thing? Or? Only in Lincoln at a specific <laughs> location. <laughs> it's, it's not like nationwide. Well, well, it is, but it's one of those things where it's a very obscure thing. Soon to take over. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Pickleball's got a corner on the market of strange sports. <laughs> but it's a different crowd. <laughs> it's a different crowd. This, there's the croquet, there's the garden croquet crowd, which is sort of your, uh, your casual user. And then golf croquet is a watered down version of what they call association croquet, which is like, you gotta be really out of your mind to do that. There's a lot more rules. There's a book that's this thick of association croquet rules. And yeah, it's, it's a wild world out there. <laughs> I just wanna comment, there's a lot going on. When it, it's amusing, but when you go, the ball goes through there and it pauses on the computer. There's a lot going on there. Yes, agree. Shall I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Could that be coming from a phone and make it a little more uh, user friendly on the go? Well, so we need to change some things around because the that is all happening in lab view, which is sort of a proprietary thing that you wouldn't do. It smells like a web app or uh, yeah, I mean I'm sure it could be done with sure someone could do it. <laughs> but yes, I didn't. Actually, the particle photon would probably be pretty, pretty good choice for that. You could make an app to do it. So and you're saying that the wind ball goes to and applauds and doesn't land. It does applaud, but the uh, we were going to have it applaud in like sort of a slow, handwritten sort of way. <laughs> so, but everybody got the same applause, which seemed appropriate to me. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And our last presenter, Nathan. Let's see, uh, your presentation up on your web page. Yeah, I sent you the uh, the second one there, the project.